from 125,000 in 2014 to 3 million in 2015. The cash or the current asset skyrocketed in 2018 to 67 million 775,800 pesos. With all due respect, Attorney Roque, san po nang galing itong napakalaking perang ito? Please enlighten us. In line with that, Mr. Chair, I respectfully move that we direct the resource speaker to submit his salen from 2016 until 2022. Um, Mr. Chair, with all due respects, this is a legislative inquiry on POGOs, and I think it has become too personal <laughs> already. Attorney, for the record, kayo po ba ay may pamilya? Meron po. Maari niyo po ba ang banggitin ang pangalan ng inyong asawa? Si Myla Roque po. And I understand, Attorney Harry Roque, that your wife, Myla Roque, is likewise a government employee. Do you confirm? Former. She no longer is. She used to be she a used government be. employee. Yes, ma'am. May we be enlightened, Attorney Roque? Saan po ba siya nagtrabaho before? Well, let me correct, um, ma'am, your statement that she was a government employee. She was not because she was a private representative to the Board of Trustees of the Pag-ibig Fund. And uh, her category as a uh, public, uh, as a private sector representative um, did not make her a government employee, as in fact, she was not covered by GSIS, and uh, there's even a, um, an issue on whether or not the private sector representative should even file a salen. Nevertheless, Attorney Roque, as private representative of Pag-ibig Board of Trustee, what benefits or allowances does she receive? She gets uh, per diem, per hearing. Per diem, per hearing. Per meeting, I should per say. Per meeting. Yes, and may we be enlightened. Kailan po ba siya na-appoint as private representative dito sa Pag-ibig Board of Trustees? If I'm not mistaken, it was around 2017. 2017. If and I'm not when, mistaken po. When did it end, Attorney Roque? It ended, if I'm not mistaken, 2020. 2020. Two or 23, Your Honor. I, I, I cannot remember exactly. 22 and 2023. 20, and you will agree with me that during the time of the appointment of your wife as private representative of Pag-ibig Board of Trustee, the president was then President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Yes, uh, Your Honor, Ms. Madam, Mr. Chair. How about you, Attorney Roque? Did you get any government appointment during those times? I was a member of the 17th Congress from June of 2016 until November of 2017. From uh, November of 2017 until uh, October of uh, 2018, I was presidential spokesperson. And I became presidential spokesperson again from April 2020 until November of 2021. May we know, Attorney Roque, let's go back to your wife. Magkano po ba yung tinatanggap niyang per, di per diem per meeting? Um, hindi ko po talaga alam kasi hindi namin pinag-uusapan yan, but it was a very modest sum. And with reference to your engagement in the government, 2017, 17 Congress, May we know how much your salary is as member of the House during that time? I do not recall, but uh, I still have colleagues from the 17th Congress here. So um, I, I think it was, I, I cannot remember the exact amount, but it was, um, I don't know, maybe 200,000, 300,000. I don't know, uh, 200,000 no? 200, a month. 
And you likewise mentioned about your appointment as the presidential spokesperson. Is that correct? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Can you please enlighten us? How much was your salary as presidential spokesperson? Almost the same because it was the same salary grade as a congressman. I understand as well, Attorney Roque, that you have children. Yes, Your Honor. May we know the names of your children? Uh, the first one is uh, Bianca Hasinta, and the second one is Harrison Jacob. Bianca and Harrison. Harrison. Does these names of your children have any connection with Biancham? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Biancham Holdings and Trading. You can yes, hear? Yes, uh, Madam Mr. Chair. And can you please enlighten us? When was this holding company incorporated, Attorney Roque? As early as 2015, before there was POGO, I believe. <laughs> It was already founded. Yes, Your Honor. And during that time, can you please enlighten us, sino po ba ang mga incorporators, first incorporators of Biancham Holdings and Trading? That's myself, my wife, my then law partner, Joel Butuyan, Eileen Garcia, and one of my staff lawyers who has since passed, Jarme Garcia. Can you enlighten us further? Gaano ho ba kalaki ang inyong ownership dito sa Biancham Holdings and Trading, Attorney Roque? It differed over the years, uh, Mr. Chair, because it started as a small um, company. It, has, it was amended once. And, Mr. Uh, Chair, can we please direct our resource speaker to limit his answers to the questions which are being propounded? If Mr. I may Chair. proceed, Mr. Chair, would you confirm, Attorney Roque, that at the time of the incorporation of Biancham Holdings and Trading, you were holding 49.96% ownership, while your wife, Myla, is holding 49.96% ownership. Do you confirm? If that is what appears in records, I confirm that, Mr. Chair, but I do not have a copy of the records before me right now. In other words, Mr. Chair, the remaining 0.8% is the ownership which are being shared by Joel Butuyan, Zarmay Garcia, and Eileen Garcia. And it was mentioned earlier by our resource speaker that all these incorporators were his associates, either in Batuyan and Rael, and in center law. Do you confirm? I confirm that, Mr. Chair. Um, it is a family corporation with my close associates as nominal stockholders to complete the five shareholders that were then required by the old corporation code. It is no longer required to have five. How do you describe the nature of this ownership when it is only 0.8% being shared by three. Because, to my opinion, they are nominal, if not dummy. Your, Hon Your Honor, Mr. Chair, they're not dummies. I think the correct term is they are nominal shareholder. They hold qualifying share shares so that we can complete the minimum five um, members of the board and incorporators that was then required by the old corporation code. This no representation, longer required. Mr. Chair, take notice of the answer of the resource speaker. And do you confirm as well that from 2014 to 2020, you were the president of Biancham? If that is what the records uh, indicate, I do not have the records before me, but I will confirm if that is what appears in the uh, Securities and Exchange it does. Commission. Yes. It does, Mr. Chair. And do you confirm as well that your wife, Myla, was a member of the board of director of Biancham from 2014 to 2020 as well? I confirm that, uh, Mr. Chair, because that is the nature of the five incorporators and the requirement of five directors as well. And do you confirm as well that as the president, a calibrated lawyer, a prominent personality in the legal circle, of course it is a common knowledge that yearly the company or the corporation 
is required to file an audited financial statement. Does our resource speaker confirm? I confirm that, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, may I request our secretariat to please flash in our screen the 2014 Statement of Assets and Liabilities of Bian Cham. Technical, can you please uh, plus the sal end of uh, Tony Roque? Mr. Chair, I wish to correct with all due respect, this is audited financial statement of Bian Cham and not sal end. And I am requesting that the page of assets be flashed in the screen. This is 2014. Okay, could you please uh, flash the audited financial statements? of the company, technical. Mr. Chair, while we are waiting for the document to be shared to the public, I wish to share that the document discloses cash for 2014 of Bian Cham in the total amount of 125,300 pesos. And then, Mr. Chair, I wish to invite as well the attention of the public, especially the Quad, to the 2015 audited financial statement of Bian Cham. Noticeably, the cash increased from 125,000 from 2014 to 3,125,300 pesos in 2015. I wish to take note, Mr. Chair, 2014 and 2015 were prior to the administration of former President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Having seen 2014 and 2015 assets of Bian Cham, kindly flash the 2018 assets of Bian Cham Holdings. Could you please plus the 2018 audited financial statement of 2018? For the information of the committee, Mr. Chair, from 125,000, in 2014 to 3 million in 2015 the cash or the current assets skyrocketed in 2018 to 67 million 775,800 pesos with all due respect attorney roque San po nang galing itong napakalaking perang ito? Please enlighten us. Nagbenta po ang pamilya ko ng isang 1.8 hectares na lupa sa multinational village Paranaque. We sold it to uh, um, the Velarde Group. In turn, the Velarde Group swapped it to the SM Group. And our 1.8 hectares now is where the SM Warehouse is located. And can you please enlighten us? Magkano po ba ang pinagbentahan nyo ng property na nabanggit ninyo? Ang zone valuation po, nung panahon na binenta Mr. namin... Mr. Chair, we are asking about the selling price, not the zone valuation. Ma'am, because the selling price is the zone valuation, it was 12,000 per square meters. Times... Not at all times, Mr. Chair. No, the zone yung... valuation is not always the selling price of the property. And that is a common knowledge. Please enlighten the Quad. How much was the selling price of your property, which was the source of your 67,775,800 pesos cash of Bian Cham in 2018? I do not remember the exact amount, but it is roughly for uh, the 1.8 hectares, 216 million, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chair, 
in line with the answer of the resource speaker, I respectfully move that we be provided with a copy of the sale document, the deed of sale of the property that was mentioned by our resource speaker. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, may I manifest that I have a PowerPoint presentation that I intended to use, and I precisely included in that PowerPoint presentation the deed of sale, Your Honor, of this property of 1.8 hectares in multinational village, Paranaque. Mr. Chair, that will depend on the Quad if he will be allowed to make his presentation, Mr. Chair. Um, if I may proceed, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, please proceed, and we will... Uh... Uh, de uh, decide on that uh, request by the resource persons at the appropriate time. Please proceed. I understand as well that in view of your appointment as presidential spokesperson, you are likewise bound by Republic Act number 6713. That is the code of conduct and ethical standards for public officials and employees. May I ask our resource speaker, ito po bang 67,775,800 pesos. Did you disclose this in your statement of asset and liabilities and net worth? I remember I declared cash of 60 million, Mr. Chair, in my sal -end. What explains the disparity? Why not declare the 67 million instead of 60 million cash only? Because uh, I did not have 67 million in cash at that point in time, uh, Mr. Chairman. I had other assets, but the cash was 60 million at the time when I last filed my sal -end as presidential spokesperson, Mr. Chair. Nonetheless, Mr. Chair, the document reflects the amount of 67,775,800 pesos. This is contained in the 2018 audited financial statement of Biancham as of 2018. And if, if I may share, Mr. Chair, Section 2, Rule 130 of the Rules of Court, Documentary Evidence. Documents as evidence consist of writings, recordings, photographs, or any material containing letters, words, sounds, numbers, figures, symbols, or their equivalent, or other modes of written expression offered as proof of their contents. Photographs include still pictures, drawings, stored images, x-ray films, motion pictures or videos. This representation, Mr. Chair, wish to manifest that we are establishing the amount contained in the audited financial statement, which has disparity to the amount that was disclosed as represented by the resource speaker in his sal N for 2018. Mr. Chair, if I may continue. For the information of the Filipino people, I wish to share Section 8, Republic Act Number 6713. This is the Code of Conduct of Ethical Standards for Public Officials and Employees. It states that a public official statement of assets and liabilities, or SALEN, includes, among others, all other assets, such as investments, cash on hand, or in banks, stocks, bonds, and the like. And I maintain, Mr. Chair, whatever is reflected in the audited financial statement should have been declared in exact amount in the sal end of the resource speaker. If I may continue, Mr. Chair, Republic Act Number 3019, Anti-Graph and Corrupt Practices Act Section 7, Statement of Assets and Liabilities. Every public officer within 30 days after the approval of this act or after assuming office or within the month of January of every other year thereafter, as well as upon the expiration of his term of office or upon his resignation or separation from office, shall prepare 
and file with the office of the corresponding department head, or in the case of head of department or chief of an independent office with the office of the president, or in the case of members of the Congress and the officials and employees thereof, with the office of the Secretary of the corresponding House, a true, detailed, and sworn statement of assets and liabilities, including a statement of the amounts and sources of his income, the amounts of his personal and family expenses, and the amount of income taxes paid for the next preceding calendar year, provided that public officers assuming office less than two months before the end of the calendar year may file these statements in the following months of January. Given these legal provisions, Mr. Chair, both 3019 and 6713, may we ask the resource speaker, did you strictly comply with the requirements of these laws? Mr. Chair, to the best of my abilities, yes, because my last net worth that I declared was 124 million pesos. In line with that, Mr. Chair, I respectfully move that we direct the resource speaker to submit his SALEN from 2016 until 2022 as described and required by Section 7 of the anti graft and Corrupt Practices Act, Mr. Chair, so moved. Please, uh, Attorney Roque, submit your SAL N since 2016 to 2022. Uh, Your Honors, may I manifest that I will do even more than that? I have asked the House of Representatives to submit my SAL N even when I was working as a working law student uh, in this honorable chamber. Mr. I Chair, may we student, direct so our resource speaker? Way back, speaker, Your Honor, 1988. To just answer I'm the question. I'm preparing everything on my silent. Mr. Chairman, Tony Roque, please Chairman. answer the question of... Uh, I will comply, Your Honor, Congressman, and will okay. even submit earlier silence which are filed with the House of Representatives. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Chairman, perhaps? Uh, Mr. Chairman, let me remind uh, our uh, former colleague uh, Attorney Harry Roque, please do not talk unless until you are recognized by the Chairman. Uh, I, I am so reminded, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Mr. Chair, Ministro, please proceed. Proceeding to my second point, Mr. Chair, I wish to invite the attention of the resource speaker to the two versions of his or Bian Cham's general information sheet. And may I request the Secretariat to once again share these two documents to the public. We have one GIS. This is dated March 2, 2020. And another GIS dated October 21, 2020. If we will compare, Mr. Chair, in March 2020, you still see the name Herminio Harry L. Roque Jr., who owns 98%, and Myla Roque, who owns 23, 21%. However, Mr. Chair, with the GIS of Biancham, in October 2020, the names of Harry Roque and Myla Roque are no longer in the stockholders' information. And I wish to invite the attention of the Quadcom that a certain Percival Ortega, per October 2020 GIS, is now the owner of 99.99% ownership of Biancham Holdings. Can we request the resource speaker to enlighten us on this? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, we invested um, por proceeds from the sale of our Paranaque property, the 1.8 hectares, into a real estate project in uh, Bataan in a corporation known as First Bataan. Now, in that investment, bulk of um, 
the cash that we used belonged to an old maid aunt who was living with me, who was also my ward. It was with her consent, although I was officially appointed her guardian, because she believed that when we sold the 1.8 hectares in Paranaque, we should buy land elsewhere, because that is what my grandfather specifically instructed her. So bulk of what we used to purchase the land in Bataan came from my aunt, her share in the sale of the 1.8 hectares in Paranaque, whereas my siblings and I invested our proceeds from our share from our mother's side um, in the same project. Now, at that time, we had to reflect more or less the true ownership of the property because my aunt would want that already. No? So what we did was we hired one of my friends, one of my lawyer friends who knew everyone, who knew my aunt, who was a retired judge, who knew my brothers and sisters, who knew me, to act as trustee because we were in the process of allocating the correct amount of shares for everyone because uh, what happened was when the Paranaque sale happened, two of my siblings did not join us in the investment. So um, we had to reflect, we have to put it first in the name of a lawyer in trust as we arrange eventually how the um, property will be um, divided amongst us. No? Unfortunately, my aunt has since died and we are now in the process of settling her um, estate. And so uh, Attorney Ortega stands as trustee representing the estate of my aunt. And that is why there had to be a reorganization, a reorganization which will also have to await final resolution upon approval of my aunt's uh, estate, uh, which is actually judicial because my aunt left a will. Mr. Chair, I wish to invite the attention of our resource speaker to these two documents, notwithstanding the fact that there was a trust agreement between Percival Ortega and attorney Harry Roque, notwithstanding the fact about the agreement among the family, may I know what mode of transfer was used for the spouses Roque to be able to transfer it to the name of Percival Ortega? In the form of a trust, all of us, all of us uh, executed trust agreements to uh, Percival Ortega because he will be eventually the one to divide amongst us the property, also pursuant to what the judgment of the estate court will adjudge. May we direct the resource speaker, Mr. Chair, that we be furnished with a copy of this trust agreement? Um, Mr. Chair, with all due respects, this is a legislative inquiry on POGOs, and I think it has become too personal <laughs> already. Mr. We are Chair? Now, I, have, I will submit a copy of the um, deed of sale of the property to show that the money that we used to acquire the property in Bataan was legitimately sourced and did not come from POGOs. But I think family matters should be left alone already, especially since, as I said, there's also settlement of estate in process. No? Um, I just would like to raise the issue of materiality. I, question, I answered questions on source of funds to prove it did not come from Pogo because we sold 1.8 hectares in, which is a commercial property in multinational village Paranaque, which I felt was material to this inquiry. But to inquire now even on family trust affairs, I think it's too much already. I think I have shared what the committee should know that we had funds to acquire the land and legitimately sourced through a sale transaction which is duly documented and I will submit a copy of the said um, um, document including also a copy of the uh, um, zone evaluation in the area to indicate at least minimum price by which we sold the 1.8 hectares. With all due respects, Mr. Chair. Mr. Does, Chair. Does the movement uh, With all due respect to the resource speaker, but I insist that we provided with the mode or the instrument that was used in the transfer of the shareholdings from spouses Roque 
to Attorney Percival Ortega. I wish to go back to our previous committee hearings, Mr. Chair. We have established a number of circumstantial evidence already, which, when taken together, will lead to one reasonable conclusion that our resource speaker has connection to Lucky South 99. At first, I was surprised by the sudden increase of the assets of Biancham that is coming from 125,000 to 3 million and then in 2018 to 67 million. And now, Mr. Chair, we have seen a sudden change in the name of the shareholder or the stockholder of Biancham formerly from Spouses Roque and now to Attorney Percival Ortega. I wish to rule out, to verify, ito po bang mga movement ng pera na ito? After all, he is the one who mentioned na hindi ito galing sa Pogo. Let the quad verify kung saan nga nang galing ang mga perang ito, Mr. Chair. Uh, Attorney Roque, uh, the... Congresswoman Luistro has uh, stated uh, the reason why the document that uh, she is asking from your end is necessary in the investigation that the Quadcom is conducting. With respect, of course, to the funds that uh, are in question, uh, the committee should be convinced uh, following the questions raised by uh, Congresswoman Luistro, the committee must be convinced that indeed the proceeds of the sale of your property is the one that is now being reflected as the assets of uh, the Biancham Corporation. So I uh, would ask uh, our resource persons to please comply with the request of uh, Congresswoman Jinky Luistro. I will comply, um, Mr. Chair. But may I be allowed to say that I differ with the, the good congresswoman's conclusion that circumstantial evidence have linked me with Pogo. I assert that my relationship with Sandra Ong was a professional relationship. And I think the deed of sale over 1.8 hectares of land will prove where we source the funds to buy the Bataan property. Thank you, Mr. The Chair. The manifestation of the, our resource persons is noted. Mr. Chair. Please proceed. Uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, should, is this should, related to... Uh, yes, yes. To, with the indulgence of Congresswoman Please, with the indulgence Luistro? of Congresswoman Luistro. Chairman Abante, you Should he, she make a, a motion to that, Mr. Chair, in effect? I already move, Mr. Chair, that yes. he be directed to submit to us the copy of the mode of transfer if that is indeed a trust agreement. Yes, uh, Congressman Abante, uh, the resource person has uh, stated that he will comply with the request of the Quad. As the uh, resource speaker said, he, he will comply. I second the motion. Thank you. So please proceed, Congressman Luistro. Mr. Chair, I just want to share to the public that the other and common modes of transfer of these shareholdings are by way of sale or assignment. And if these are the cases or the modes that, which were adopted by Bian Cham, I believe that there is an obligation to pay the necessary taxes for the transfer. I wish to read, Mr. Chair, Section 254 and 255 of the tax code as amended. The state can file a criminal case for tax evasion against any taxpayer who willfully attempts in any manner to evade or defeat payment of any tax imposed by the tax code. Given this legal provision, Mr. Chair, I wish to move, or may I move as well, that we direct the resource speaker to submit his income tax return for 2000. 18 declared in 2019. Mr. Chair, so moved. There is a motion that the resource person uh, submit a copy of his uh, income tax return for the period 
for the period uh, 220, 2018. The supposed income was generated 2018, but I believe, Mr. Chair, that by practice it will be disclosed by 2019 income tax return, filed in 2019. There is a motion, as clearly stated by uh, Congresswoman Jinky Luistro, to require the resource person to submit uh, uh, income tax return on the period covered. Uh, is Mr. there Mr. Chair? a second? Uh, Mr. Chair, may I inquire? Because the sale of real Mr. estate... Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, uh, Congressman Akop. I think we have a motion to settle. Okay. Before this resource uh, person can speak. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, we will first dispose of the motion and then we will allow Congressman, uh, uh, Attorney Harry Roque to speak. So there is a motion clearly stated earlier by Congresswoman Jinky Luistro, duly seconded. Are there any objections? Hearing none, the motion is carried. The resource person is uh, required to submit to the committee the documents being asked by Congresswoman Jinky Luistro. Yes. Now, uh, uh, Congress, uh, ha Attorney Harry Roque, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to manifest that as far as the sale of the real estate is concerned, it will not be reflected in my income tax because it is subject to final tax. So I will uh, submit the uh, final tax paid for the transaction, um, uh, Mr. Chair, because at this point, my income tax will be irrelevant to the increase of my assets because it was by reason of sale of real estate subject to final tax. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Attorney Harry Roque. Does that uh, satisfy? Uh, this representation takes note of his manifestation, but this representation maintains as well the submission of the ITR declared in 2019.